Hello ladies and gentlemen, Central here. Hope you guys are having a wonderful day as always. We all like saving money where we can and hopefully today's video is going to help save some of you some money. So recently I got an email from Garmin saying that I needed to um, re-up my subscription to my standard Garmin Pilot app which is $109.99 a year and for the past couple of years I've paid that, no worries. I do like the app, but it does have some limitations. For instance, there's no way to uh, display your approach plates, your IFR approach plates, on top of your moving map, uh, geo-reference, if you will, unless you want to pay for the premium edition of, of the app, and that's an extra $100 a year, $209.98 a year. Well, I guess they take one penny off. But that's pretty steep, in my opinion, just to get that one feature. Now, as you can see, if you get the premium version, you get a bunch of other stuff as well, stuff that I'm not necessarily going to use. But you see, the thing is, I'm wanting to do IFR training, I want to get my instrument uh, rating, and I want to be able to have an EFB that displays the approach plates uh, geo-reference to my moving map. That's what I want. But I'm not willing to pay a hundred extra dollars a year just to have that. So what to do? Well, I started hunting for a new EFB, uh, something that might be able to replace the Garmin Pilot at a lower cost. Lo and behold, I come across something called Flight Plan Go, which, interestingly enough, is also a Garmin product, but one that I was not aware of until just recently. So what is it? Well, let's go ahead and take a look. So what we're looking at here are a couple of screen captures that I took simultaneously. The one on the left I was taking on my Android smartphone. That's the uh, Flight Plan Go app there. On the right-hand side, you have uh, a screen capture from my iPad, and of course, that's the Garmin Pilot app. Now, there are some differences between the two. The Garmin Pilot app is something that I'm used to using, so I, I'm already familiar with the user interface. There's a little bit of bias there, perhaps, but I do find that the controls on Flight Plan Go are perhaps just a little bit clunkier than on the uh, Garmin Pilot app. However, most of the features are there. You can pretty much do everything on the uh, Flight Plan Go app that you can do on the uh, Garmin Pilot app. Now, again, the only reason that I'm comparing it Android to Apple here, in <laughs> apples to oranges, um, is because I wanted to capture these at the same time. I will say that I did put the Flight Plan Go app on my iPad, and it seems to be a little bit more user-friendly on the iPad. I think when these software developers come up with these apps, they typically go with iOS. They start there to um, uh, create the app, and then they'll make an Android copy. So what you've seen me do here on my Android device is I have uh, selected the approach plate for Bennettsville here, and you can see that it's geo-referenced. So I just changed the opacity. It's geo-referenced right on top of the airport. This is what I was looking for. You go to do that with the Garmin Pilot app, and uh, of course you can see there that it is locked and it, it says that, uh, yeah, you need to pay for the extra subscription, your extra $100 a year, <laughs> if you want to be able to geo-reference your approach plates. So up until this point, that hasn't been a problem, of course. I haven't been uh, doing any serious IFR training, but now that I am, I want to be able to do that. Can't do that uh, at all with the uh, Garmin Pilot app, uh, at least with the standard version. But I can absolutely free with the Flight Plan Go app. Now, one thing I was really hoping that I could get a side by side comparison on was the ADSB data. Unfortunately, I could not get the Flight Plan Go app to connect up to my Garmin uh, GNX 375 on the Android device. I could with the Apple device, and so we'll take a look at that uh, in a minute, but I just wanted to, uh, you know, make that point clear. If you plan on using an Android device, it might not connect up to your uh, Garmin unit or perhaps even some of the other uh, ADS-B in units. Now, I don't know if that's just this build of the um, software. Perhaps in the future they'll fix that but I could not get my uh, Garmin unit to connect up to the Flight Plan Go app for whatever reason on the Android device. 
but while we're talking about it and just take a look at the Garmin Pilot app and you can see that there are some aircraft displayed um, on screen. You can also see that there's a, a bit of a cloudy look to the screen. That's because it's displaying some uh, weather information. Also, uh, I have an opacity set for um, the cloud layers. So there's a cloud layer here that it's depicting. Um, the Flight Plan Go app will do that as well. But again, not with the Android app, at least in the current build. Let's go ahead and take a look at the Flight Plan Go app on the app iPad. So here we're looking at the Flight Plan Go app on the iPad. Again, iPad a little bit more user friendly with the app, but you still get the same thing. You can see there that I've got uh, the geo referenced approach plate over Bennettsville, and all is good. You can also see that I've got ADSB data coming in. There are airplanes being displayed on the screen. And what's neat about the Flight Plan Go app is not only will it give you audio warnings if you get close to another airplane, which I did turn off because it, it did get rather repetitive and annoying, but uh, not only that, but it'll give you different color codes. So you can see all of the airplanes are showing up yellow. If you get close to an airplane, if it's uh, within 3,000 feet of you and you get, uh, you know, within just a few miles of it, it'll go from yellow to orange. And if you get really close, which I'm not actually going to demonstrate here, I won't, won't, won't be showing that in the video, but if you get really close, like if you're on the ground, for instance, taxiing around, there's another aircraft broadcasting ADS-B, you'll be close enough where it'll actually display red. So that's nice. You get some quick color references. Uh, yellow is, it means you're good. Orange means you're getting close. Red means you're danger close. So that's neat. It's neat that they've got it color coded like that. Another feature which I was afraid I might lose going from the Garland Pilot app to a free app would be the option to create a flight plan and then throw it to my Garmin unit. As it turns out, I can actually still do that in the Flight Plan Go app. So I made a, a quick little flight plan there, clicked on the two arrows at the top for the uh, Garmin Connects, and it shot it right to the 375. So you can still build your flight plans in the app, take them to your airplane, throw the flight plan to your panel-mounted unit, and you're good to go. So that's nice. And the Flight Plan Go app will, of course, display all of the next-gen data. If your ADS-B in-unit receives that information, you'll be able to pick up all of your next-gen weather, your SIGMETs, AIRMETs, while you're flying. So that's nice. There's really not much of a situational aware awareness lost going from the Garmin Pilot app to the Flight Plan Go app. So to summarize, the Flight Plan Go app basically does 95% of everything the Garmin Pilot app does, but it does it absolutely free. So if you can put up with a slightly clunkier user interface, I'd say go for it.